When you hear somebody say the word cannibal, you most likely picture Hannibal Lecter from The Silence of the Lambs with that evil grin and that sinister whisper of, Hello Clarice, tingling your ear. Great movie, by the way. Although what you probably never consider is the individual who is actually getting eaten. Aren't these people just as important? Tonight, we are talking about the burgeoning subculture of love cannibalism that has men and women across the globe preparing for the ultimate dining experience. Tonight's special, you. What are we drinking, Jen? We're drinking apple strudel cocktails. And it is comprised of vodka, apple cider, lime, a a squeeze of lime, and cinnamon. Delightful. And that is because the hint this evening was schnitzel. Granted, we had strudel drink, but I did make wiener schnitzel for dinner so that totally counts and usually i think you would follow a dinner of wiener schnitzel with apple strudel for dessert delish this hits the spot all right thanks everyone for subscribing to uh, the new podcast ghoul got a lot of subscribers and a lot of listeners and i should have the second episode out uh well actually it should be out by the time you hear this one so be sure to go out and check out the second episode It's going to be two of four episodes, and this is going to walk through Ed Gein's house, and we're going to look at all the fun collectibles that he has in his possession. Ooh, I can't wait to hear it. Be like a a haunted house, except like real house of horrors. Yeah. So that's kind of terrifying. Also, it's a safer version for me to go through a haunted house without having to like get jumped out at. If I listen yeah, to this podcast, I would know. I would prefer to walk through Ed's house, I think, because, well, I don't know about that. There's probably some real bad juju there. I mean, there's bad juju, but is anything going to jump out at me? You don't know. That's true. I don't know. No, Ed's never killed anyone in the home. Doesn't matter. But there is a lot of things in that house. He's just dismembered them there. Yeah. Yeah. Surprise shots. Surprise shots. We don't know what they are, because they're a surprise. Cheers. Cheers. Fireball? That is correct. All right. Tonight, we have a really great episode. This is one of those feel-good episodes. So if you're... (laughs) How often do we do feel-good episodes? I feel like every time he says that, it's the exact opposite of a feel-good episode. We're we're going to want to go crawl into a corner and cry afterwards. Yeah, or like fetal position (laughs) immediately after he tells us every detail. If you're a mama bear out there taking your kids to soccer practice right now, go ahead and remove those headphones. (laughs) Because this is a... Family-friendly Family-friendly, G-rated there's not many things that are G-rated anymore. I don't, so many Disney movies are at least PG now. Yeah, I don't think that they even use G-rating anymore. Yeah, I don't, yeah. They use G-unit, which is me. Oh. G-unit. All right, so the hint tonight was schnitzel. So, Nicole, where are we going and who are we killing tonight? My first instinct would be... Title of your sex tape, where are we going, who are we killing? Yes. I think we're going to like a, one of those German settlement towns in America. Um, I know that there is one in Texas. I want to say it's called Fredericksburg. I know there's a Virginia? Fredericksburg in Virginia. There's there's like there's a town in, there's I know German in Texas. Towns. Yeah. There's plenty of German towns. Yeah, but like, yeah, where it's very still oh. authentic German. So I think we're still staying in America. I think we're going to a German town. I'm going to say it's the one in Texas. I don't remember the name of the town. So I think we're going to Texas. I think we're going to 1978. And I think um, I think there is a murderer that is of German descent that is killing other townsfolk with his axe. Oh, the an axe. Okay. Oh, is he what? wearing and, lederhosen? And per- perhaps, yes, he's wearing lederhosen, and perhaps he is mincing the meat with his wiener schnitzel. Oh, yeah, Ew. I forgot to use the hint, wiener schnitzel. Yeah, so he's he's mixing up his meat with, with some wiener schnitzel. Oh. 
Beat uh, that, Jen. I want to say before we start. <laughs> beat that wiener schnitzel? No. Just, no. <laughs> <Ew>. <laughs> mm, I think that we are going to Austria. And I think that we are going to be covering the murder of a grandma who is famous for her schnitzel recipe. Hmm. Probably the reason we're doing this episode tonight is because we just did a German episode and I keep forgetting to clear my cookies <laughs> and they always recommend shit and I didn't even think about it. But most likely mm. it's because we just did that Nazi episode. Well, that's, that's about the human skin lampshades. More shades. in favor for Jen's theory then. If there's your first episode, go to talkmurder.com to see the photos this is one that you don't want to miss. You got to see these photos because I'm putting them on there. And, it, you know, if you got kids in the car, just go ahead and show them the iPhone with the photos on it. If you never want your children to sleep again, please right, direct yeah. them to talkmurder.com. All right. We're going to March 9th, 2001 at 8.44 a.m. We're going to Berlin. Oh. And this, these two guys right here. If you want to describe this guy, what do you think he does for a living? A tech consultant. Oh, a damn. professor. You know, he does look like a Silicon Valley kind of guy. Try I wouldn't have guessed his name was Armin, though. Well, he's German. Oh, it's Armin. Oh. Armin Mevez. That's the last time I'm going to say his last name because I got it right that time. Good job. Mevez. Proud of you. The oh, you W is a V. Yeah, and so. much of German language right that i think so armin mevis look at him and then the other guy we're talking about is burned brandis brandis hmm. so those are the two guys we're talking about can you describe armin for our listeners um middle-aged man receding blonde hairline he looks like peter teal a little bit he has a kind smile broad shoulders a pen um, in his pocket. Mm -hmm, a pen mm -hmm. in his pocket. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> a schnitzel in his pocket. Though. Describe this guy. Um, this guy's got more like olivey skin, dark hair, um, and round spectacles. Scruffy. He's not smiling. I don't like how his glasses are. They're very European. Mm. Like the, they don't fit the top his face. of them. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like that they connect both eyes with the bridge. Yeah, it's, they're they're fashion forward. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. But that doesn't well, mean I have to like them. This guy actually is really fit, and we're gonna see that in a minute. He's got a six pack. This reminds me. So one of the um, games that we used to play when we uh, studied abroad is he gay, straight, or just European? Oh <laughs> yeah, like from Legally Blonde. <laughs> All right, so tonight we are going to Berlin. We're taking a train from Berlin at 8.44 a.m. on March 9th, 2001. Brandis, the guy you're looking at now, who I'm going to call BB from now on because I can't really pronounce his name, is Berndt, B-E-R-N-D, Brandis. But I'm just going to call him BB. The they, other guy, I'm going to call him Armin because that's his first name. Do you remember the Butterfinger BBs? Yes, those are so good. March 9th, 2001, 8.44 a.m., BB takes a train from Berlin. Armin leaves home. He's in Rottenburg. He goes to pick up BB from the station at the Castle Station. K-A-S-S-E-L, Castle Station. The train arrives at 11.14 a.m. BB is wearing a baseball cap, dark shirt, dark jeans, and they meet each other. They, I mean, they've talked on the internet quite a bit, mm. but they've never met in person. They never met in person. This is kind of a first meeting. They meet at the train station and they go back to Armin's house in Rottenburg. Terrible name for a city. Mm. No, it's not Rotten. Rottenburg. Just sounds not fun. As they're driving back, BB starts to touch Armin in a sexual, provocative way. Basically, his. Wiener schnitzel. Got it. He's touching them. <laughs> is this where, <laughs> where wiener schnitzel comes in? Okay. They finally <laughs> arrived at his house, which I'm going to show you the house in a second. And BB starts undressing. 
Now, in the interview from Armin, he says, quote, he looked good. He had a sporty figure, as I imagined. He was a very nice and lovely man. They go upstairs to the second floor. Now, I'm going to show you the house in a little bit. It's huge. It's an old manor. In fact, the house is over 700 years old. Wow. It's a medieval house. Like a Dracula house? Well, I'll show you right now. Go to talkmore.com if you want to see the house. This is the house. It's a 14-room manor house. Oh, my gosh. Wow. A Tudor house? I love those. Yeah, but it's it's trashed on the inside. You can oh, see it's it trashed. Whoa. Is that, was that what it looked like then? Yeah. Go ahead and describe what you're seeing. Hoarders. It reminds me of the Pazuzu one. Yeah. This this is literally... Perhaps no feces, but... He was living in it like this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. It's a 14... See, guys, you... You know, you didn't have it that bad with me. No, definitely. Oh, this is ginger. Wait, wait, this is the wrong video. This is ginger. <laughs> <laughs> Look, there's Jim's hat. Oh, my God. Stop. <laughs> I have to say, like, I've been doing a really good job of maintaining my it house. It looks great. It looks great. So, well, I'm showing the girls a video walkthrough of the home. I mean, it's just tr- trash. It's just trash. It looks like a construction site, <laughs> Oh, my site God, a body too. freezer. Well, oh. just a regular freezer, but... Oh. Um, I'm deep freezer, but I would have to say that it, it, I, it's uninhabitable that way. Yeah. Even though no he was way. habitating. But it's really cool because the, the 14 room manor house is over 700 years old, which is really cool. Look at the picture again. Pretty cool. That is it really is cool. cool. Like 700 years, man. So they go upstairs and they started talking. They're drinking coffee naked. For some reason, they put that in there in the newspaper <laughs> that they're naked drinking it's coffee. It's the Germans. <laughs> it's, Which, that's, it's normal, yeah. That's the only way I drink my coffee, so I didn't find that it. That is the only way you drink your coffee, Not which is constantly all the time and yeah, naked. Because that's the only way you can do coffee enemas. So they started playing sex games with each other. Obviously, they're both homosexual. You guys got that. All right. I mean, I'm assuming. I mean, but they don't have to be. You yeah. know, maybe they could be experimenting. Now, here's... Uh, Brandes again one more time look at him so he actually wants something more more painful oh Mm -hmm. like kinky yeah kinky kind of um s&m s&m that's big over there bdsm type of stuff yeah like do host me oh my god (laughs) do i think we listened to that during the crossbow episode too can we we please listen to it not right yeah he wanted some do host like seriously so he wanted something more sexy and torturous and he wasn't getting it from armin so he decides to be like you know what i i think i want to go back home i want to go back to berlin Mm -hmm. so they actually get in the car and drive all the way back to the uh, train station and then at the last second brandes is like you know what I think I think this could work because as I'll talk about, he's dated other women and mm. got burned by the women. Mm-hmm. He really wanted something different with this. So he's thinking he's like, you know what? I'm like, I think this can work. You know, you're so cute. And I think you can really hurt me like I want. Ooh. OK, Wait, you know, which, I do have B. to B. say is one who wanted BB. Yeah, yeah. He I, wanted Brand the pain. Burn, I would have Brand to S. say that Armin looked like he would be a tender lover. Yeah, and there we go. So if you go, so if you're looking at the photos, Armin does look like a tender, not tender like not on tender, your, yeah, tender, tender a lover, gen- a gentle, caring such, lover, such a gentle way of yeah, putting it. Yeah, he's very gentle. BB, on the other hand, which you're seeing now, he wants it rough. rough he's like, sex, make it hurt. It's a ludicrous song. Oh. Yeah. So he wants it real oh, you hurt. Went all for it. Yeah, I mean, I had to commit. So on the way to the train station to go back to Berlin, Brandes changes his mind. He's like, you know what? I think I can turn this guy. I think I can make him really sadistic and really hurt me the way I want to be hurt. So what they do is decide to give it one more chance. They go back home, but on the way, they stop at the local CVS, not CVS, like a pharmacy, and they grab a bunch of sleeping pills and some schnapps. Brandes, he just downs the sleeping pills, washes it down with some schnapps. So the, the trashed houses are means? Yeah, exactly. And it was like that. Yeah. When they were living, it was that trashed when he was living in it. It was that trashed 
when he was living in I've, it. And I, I would in, not picture that with and him in his get, pencil pocket, you know, protector. protector. Well, I'm going to get to this in a minute. But the character Armin in this story actually relates a lot to Ed Gein. Oh. Because Armin's hmm. mother died a few years before what we're talking about now took place. Mm -hmm. And the house didn't look like that before the mother died. I mean, the mother had everything immaculate. But now if you look at the house, it's like a it's a walking like trash dump. Pazuzu's house. If I walked yeah. into that building, I would say, turn around and take me back now. They actually have a lot in bull common. Bulldoze it. Armin here and Ed Gein, their psychologies are hmm. pretty aligned. Interesting. And oh. I didn't know that before I started this episode. But now that I've been studying more about the schizophrenic mind and stuff like that, mm -hmm. I can start to see like little links. Mm. Did Armin have schizophrenia? Yeah, definitely. From what the doctors say. And did you say what um, Armin's occupation was? We said he looked like a software engineer. He is a software engineer. Wow. And I'll get into that in Nailed a second. It, Jen. Thank you. So Brandes takes the sleeping pills. They drive back to Armin's home. They're going to give it one more shot. At 6.15 p.m., this is a full day, because remember, a little after 11 a.m. is when Armin picked up Brandes, and then they went to the home, they drank coffee naked, it was probably like 2.33, and then they decided, nah, this isn't working. They go back to the train station, now they're on the way back home, and it's 6.15. They're upstairs in one of the master bedrooms, and as I'll show you, Armin actually had built a torture room that was soundproof and everything else because he's into the BDSM as well. He's just never done it before, but he built a torture room and everything. So things are getting hot and heavy and they're having coitus like they planned. And the video camera is running. There is a video of this, an eight hour video, which is destroyed forever. Because after the jurors saw the video, they destroyed it. Cops do that sometimes. The mm. police do that. At 6.15 p.m., after they had sex again, Brandes, the one on sleeping pills, says, quote, I can't stand it anymore. They're hot, heavy, getting it. So it's in the moment. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ah, I can't stand it anymore. Quote. Okay. Cut off my penis. <gasps> Oh, oh, no, no, excuse me. Cut my penis off, end quote. Sorry, I messed Whoa, up. Whoa, <laughs> he vomited him. <laughs> he says, oh, yeah, oh, I cut my penis off. Oh, no, he didn't cut it off, or did he? I don't well, know. He just I, said that. I'm just He's sorry. asking for it. Oh. He's they're asking. into the... Brandes is asking Brandes is asking, yeah, because they're hot and heavy, and, pff, man, it's freaking steaming up. Soundproof room. I mean, it's, ugh, ugh, ugh. Here's a picture. Oh, my of, God. Can you imagine being a juror watching this whole video? Here, no. here, this is the Brandes. <laughs> I don't know why, why I found that photo. This it, is actually from this? Yeah. If you want to see Brandes naked, go to Uh, He's like. He's like weird spread uh, eagle. He's like frogs, froggy style. I don't know. He looks like a frog. You can't unsee that, folks. I, I'm not really sure how else to describe that. But he's naked. So Armin complies with the request. He goes down to the kitchen and grabs a knife. And he comes back up. And Brandaz, he's just still in the moment. Is still Armin hot. Armin also on sleeping pills? No, no, just Brandaz. And Armin holds up the knife to the head of Brandaz's penis. And he starts to saw. <gasps> It's not even like he does a, chit, a karate chop. Was it Man, a no, serrated knife or was penis. it? No, it's not a serrated knife. That's a good point. The knife is actually too dull. So he like barely nicks it. Yeah. So he barely nicks it. No, it's a real knife, a kitchen knife, yeah, but it's, it's too dull. Sharp. Yeah. Because he's got an erection. So it's hard. You can't just slice it off like a floppy fish. <laughs> yeah. You got a I samurai mean, sword. Yeah. So Brandes has an erection. So. You, you got to saw it and he tries to saw it and it doesn't work. So he's like, okay. And Brandes is getting pissed. He's like, this isn't working. You need to cut it, cut it, cut it. Is so he, even when he was doing it, like he still wanted him to do it. Yeah. 
Then Armin goes back to the kitchen, grabs another knife. He should have grabbed a cleaver, damn. And he comes back, and this is a quote What from, are you advocating for, Jeff? I'm not saying that <laughs> this should have happened. I'm just saying if you're going to do something, you need to do it. Commit. Armin goes back into the kitchen and grabs a sharper knife. He comes back upstairs, and this is a direct quote from him. BBC interviewed him, and he said this, quote, It only took a few seconds to cut it a few times. Now, Brandes starts screaming when he's cutting it. And it's working. He's actually cutting through the penis shaft. I guess we're not having bratwurst next week. No. (laughs) Oh, my God, no. (laughs) Brandes started screaming, screaming out, quote, All I see is blackness. Then Brandes says, It no longer hurts. And... He is visibly pissed off because he expected it to be more painful. Brandes, and it's not, the tip's not totally cut off at this point. Brandes says, and he's yelling this because there's blood spurting everywhere, cut it in half. So then Armin goes to the base of the penis and just saws it. He kind of pull. You got to pull it. You know, kind of like a um, like a rubber band. You pull it, and then you, with your other hand, you just take it and slice it right at the base. Ah! But it that's came, not in half. That's like off. Yeah. yeah. He cut it off completely. So he's bo- he bobbed it, bobbed it. Lorena bobbed it. Right. Yeah. He's holding the penis in his hand, and then Brandes, the woman with no penis now, says, "Cut it in half." Again. Again. Long ways? No, no. Cut it in half like there's two pieces. Or the penis is off the body. And he wants him to cut the penis yeah, in half. Yeah, in half. So one half would have the penis head and the other half would just be the penis shaft, the lower shaft and, you know, where the base So would did be. you intend to make the hint brought worst? No. Or is, <clears throat> is schnitzel involved? Now, there is blood spurting all over the room and everything else. Now, th- keep in mind, Brandes wants this. So this is consensual. So Armin goes down to the kitchen and he starts, you know, the the process, obviously, to to boil some water because they're going to eat it, obviously. And what else are you going to do with it? He boils the water and he has the the penis. I'm sorry. I just can't. Okay. I can't. This, this, I, let, let me interject. This story shocked me so much. My, my face just like dropped. I'm like, we literally uh, looked at each other with our jaws dropped. Like, I just, you know, I, at first I was like, you know, maybe some dessert would be nice. And now I'm just like, mm, no. Nope. I okay. don't even think I can finish my drink. I don't even want to no, ingest no, it. I think I vomited. need this drink now more than ever. Yeah. <laughs> this story actually shocked me a little bit at first. So, if it has any way to shock you at all it must be really bad yes. in my yeah so in my mind and this worked for me you know and i'm not trying to be um what's the word insensitive but i just replaced in my mind the word penis with sausage because it made more sense so if you if you guys want to do that you can but he takes the two halves of the sausage and he puts it on like a cheese plate And then he seasons it. Oh, my God. He makes it into a charcuterie board? Yeah. He seasons it with (laughs) salt, pepper, garlic powder. Nice, nice, nice. (laughs) (laughs) Delicious. Then he puts it in the water. Brandes is upstairs. You know, he's hungry. In fact, he hasn't eaten for a period of about 24 to 36 hours. Because he was waiting on this meal. He, he wanted he this wanted meal. He wanted to eat his own penis. Yes. Did they know this was going to happen before it happened? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> These are fucking Germans, man. What so is this like a Craigslist ad? Like, <laughs> in search of someone to, uh, to like, take my, my wiener. Oh, my God. <laughs> what? <laughs> to answer your question, not Craigslist, but yes, a forum. Oh, <laughs> I am so glad that like How? you guys I, I did not end out to be like weird, okay. yeah, body. Thank, thank God. Mutilators. Now, just murder podcast hosts, right? Yeah. The problem was, and this is—is is he not like bleeding out? No, he is bleeding out. Oh, okay. Just give me a minute. Okay. The problem is, and this is a direct quote from an interview with Armin. 
quote, the meat was so fresh that it shriveled up in the pan and it wasn't really edible. So he takes what he has and he kind of knows it's not edible because they did try it before he goes down and boils the water and seasons it. They tried it a little bit and it's like, ah, it's too rough. It needs to be cooked. So they go downstairs like Brandez is like, yo, go cook this a little bit. You know, maybe it tastes better that he seasons it and everything. And he fries it in the pan on the kitchen and it shrivels up completely. So he's like, ah, it's not going to taste good. But he goes upstairs anyway and Brandez is sitting there waiting on it he blows on it because it's you know it's hot oh man it's freaking hot it's like putting a little one of those little sausages so he gives himself a bullet (laughs) drop it's now a Vienna sausage at this point (laughs) So wait a second. It's not inedible because it's a human penis. It's inedible because it's well, they're too shriveled pieces. up. And the yeah. reason that Brandez wanted to be cut in half is because he's not selfish and he knows that Armin is sharing the dinner with him. So that's why they cut it in half so they can both eat a piece. I think so, that, that this story, I just have to listen to this story every single day and I'll be able to lose about 30 pounds in like two weeks because yeah. I don't think I can ever eat again after just this part yep. go on continue so they both try the penis sausage and spit it out it's like ah this is not edible and then brandez the one with no penis now says quote if i am still alive tomorrow we could cut off my balls and eat them for breakfast end quote <laughs> yeah. i just realized how fucked up this story is <laughs> As you're telling it back to us. <laughs> I didn't, didn't, never mind the hours of research that you've done on this. Well, so usually just when takes, I just research, I'm just taking notes and I don't really, you read know, what I'm you're like writing. listening to like hip hop and like Drake's on. I'm like, yeah, you know. Okay. Can I just say, like, do you think that someone who in their right mind sawed off someone's penis and tried to cook it would care if the person was alive or dead the next day to try and eat his testicles? I feel like they're doing this from a culinary experience. <laughs> it sounds like an LSD experience. That's what it sounds like. I don't know. <clears throat> so did he, did they also? <sighs> At 9 p.m., Brandez said that he's cold. This is about three hours after the first slice. Title of your sex date. <laughs> the first slice. <laughs> What, are they having servings now? Like, <laughs> So after the first slice, it's about 9 p.m. He says, I'm cold. It's probably because you lost all your blood, but he's freezing. So Yeah, it has nothing to do with the shock. Armin warms him up a bath. And this is another direct quote from Armin. And I'm going to put the interview on talkmer.com. If you guys don't believe me, because this story still, is crazy. Is this still recording? Is this... St- is there still a video on not, this? Yeah, not us. yeah like, there's an eight hour video of this. Going through eight this part hours? too. Yeah. The jury, in fact, the jury that watched the video, everyone on the jury was physically sick. And, and I saw a, yeah. uh, I saw a, one of the deputies, I don't know what you call deputies over there, but he testified that more than half of the jurors had to get long term uh, psychiatric treatment. Well, for I this. Mean, like, and the court had to pay for it. Like, they had to go for PTSD shit, treatment. Shit. <laughs> like, yeah. cognitive well, behavior therapy so and shit. So, I'm just thankful that you didn't <laughs> put that in this slideshow because... You and I watched... both know if Dunn could have found the video for it, he would have. Well, I mean, considering that <laughs> we all sat here and watched the Luca Magnata video... Yeah, that like, was bad. That, I mean, I don't know. I, I feel like this is worse than that yeah i i'm kind of in agreement oh with i've you. searched everywhere for that fucking video i mean every fucking where even the dark web so here's what happened with the video he takes the video and then police only show jurors and they only show jurors like an hour and a half of the video oh i thought they showed there's some, all no because there's some some very specific moments that they had to see and then right after that they destroyed the tape oh i was destroyed gonna say, it. Like, like, destroy- and, and i've seen other cases that they do that if it's yeah. so bad well i feel like the german authorities should have kept the tape and used it as a torture tactic for their prisoners yeah there you go oh wait torture's not a illegal thing well like war prisoners so brandes is freezing 
And Armin nicely warms him up at the bath. It's a hot bath. And I'm going to show you the bathtub right now. This is the bathtub right now. Can you describe this? Disgusting. All right. Thanks, Jen. Disgusting bathtub. At 9 p.m., Brandes is in the bathtub, hot water, and as soon as he got in the tub, Armin noticed that he was really happy. And this is also a direct quote from him from the interview. Quote, the blood was spurting from his open wound, just like a fountain, and that made him happy. So he was sitting there, Brandes, in the bathtub, in his own blood, and it was spurting out. So, so here's how it happened. He got cold, because that's what your body does when it shuts down, right? Mm. And then the blood wasn't spurting anymore, even though they didn't tourniquet it or anything, it just or put ice on it or anything. It just wasn't spurting. So he kind of was upset. The Brandes was upset. So once he got into the warm bath, those blood vessels dilated from the warmth and the blood started spurting again like a fountain. And then he got really happy because it was spurting. He <laughs> wants, <laughs> so he wants to die. Two and a half hours go by and Armin can hear him in the bathtub. Now, at this time, Armin is in the bedroom, the master bedroom, and he can hear Brandes screaming, but that's what he wants. So he's like, okay. And this is an important fact from all the newspapers. They all put it in there. Armin was in the other room, quote, reading a Star Trek novel. That's what it said. Like one of those fan fiction novels. Yeah. Brandes said he would get out of the bath himself. He's ready to get out. He's done. And he does get out, but he collapses. A few hours go by and he drifts in and out of consciousness. And around 2 a.m., Brandes again collapses. Armin comes back upstairs. He picks up the same knife that he used to sever his schnitzel. Armin picks back up the knife that he used to sever Brandes, and he sticks it through the side of his neck, 18 inches, and the blade actually comes out of the other side of his neck. Mm, and that say. is when he's he died. All right, so there we go. So did they eat his balls as well, or did Armin eat his balls? Over the period of the next six months, Armin has eaten at <gasps> least 45 pounds of Brandes. What? Yeah. So much for kind eyes and a tender lover. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Shit. Oh, my God. Did he put him in that body freezer? Yeah, th um, that's actually the go. freezer. Yeah, the freezer you saw. Yeah, very good. Did he want... Did Brandes want Armin to eat all of them? Two days after the slaughter happened. Slaughter. I like that. <laughs> Armin, so he doesn't eat Brandes until two days go by. And then he eats, quote, steak, potatoes, sprouts with pepper sauce and a glass of fine red wine, it, which reminded me Can of Hannibal Lecter. Yeah, Hannibal Lecter. When he said, um, what what did he say? Nice can something. Not, something yeah, Chianti. nice Chianti. 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 Yeah. Yeah, I'll put that quote in there. A census taker once tried to test me. I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. Wait, what? So when you say he, he actually ate the steak and potatoes, did he? Were we talking about Brandon? Human steak. steak. Human yeah, steak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His body. Okay. And, and also, it's sure. a little troubling that, like, he waited two days before he started eating him or was he like preserved was he on ice or was he like sitting out for two days no no he he put him in the freezer immediately oh. yeah how many other people has he eaten it was about to be more but he was arrested prior so he actually put out some more ads anyway let's get in let's get in, uh, involved in this thing a little bit more <laughs> shall we before we see some pictures all right. Oh, God. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, oh, I okay. mean, <laughs> his picture is just like. He's I, like, did I do I, that? <laughs> I know. I can't. I know, Jen. I can't get your. He looks like a tender lover. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like a Hannibal Lecter, man. Oh, man. I mean. Oh, God damn. 
He like uh. has like a profile in Chef <laughs> Weekly. Now, I, I need to say this before we go any further. <laughs> the Germans apparently don't have a law against cannibalism. So there was a what? Uh, <laughs> there was a loophole. Well, murder is was still a law. <laughs> I know. But when he first was arrested, it was like, well, he wanted to be eaten. I didn't kill him. I mean, I didn't do this. I, you know, I did what he wanted to do. Anyway, let's talk about Armin. Armin was a third son of Waltraud Mavis. Armin and his mother, Waltraud, was very close, almost like Ed Gein. Mm. Uh, the, the similarities are striking because I've done a lot of research on Ed Gein. The abnormal link that he had with his mother was the exact same. By the age of 45, the mother, while Troud, had been dumped by three husbands. Armin was six when his half-brothers left home. So they're living at home. Now, the mother, I, you guys didn't hear that. She was dumped by three husbands. I heard that, but and I was thinking, how... How? Like, they left. They're like, dude, I can't do this, man. I can't. I'm out. Hmm. Like, that's really sad, actually, that you can't... Are you that unbearable that three people are just like, peace? Yeah, she is unbearable. I, I hope that doesn't happen to me. Probably will. First, I need to get one husband to see. Yeah, get the first one out the way. <laughs> exactly. I mean, my, I, my parents did tell me to hurry up and, like, have children, so... I don't know about... <sighs> Do you want a baby? I can get you a baby. I don't know where I would, if I want any baby that you got for me, because it probably come from some suspicious means. You, you didn't say anything about an English baby. <laughs> I can get you an Armin baby. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anybody want an Armin baby at this point in the story. Oh my God, I feel like any baby that you would somehow procure for me would end up being like the spawn of Satan and be like a Chucky, like Rosemary's baby, Rosemary's literally. baby. <laughs> I'm just gonna Damien. need a, I'm just gonna need a payment in Bitcoin, obviously, in advance for this baby. <laughs> all right, Armin was six when all of his half brothers left. Not only did the mother Waltraud, the husbands leave Waltraud. Not only did all the husbands leave the mother Waltraud, Waltraud. Not only did all the husbands leave the mother by the time she was 45, all of her sons left as well. Just completely left. Didn't even talk to her anymore. So when they. Well, why is that? There must have been a reason. Well, like, she's oh, a bad what? case. Well, tell me more. And tell me more. Tell me more. This was when Armin was eight years old. Was and she then crazy as shit? His actual biological father leaves the nest as well. He's like, I can't do this. You're on your own, Armin. So Armin was the only male in the house, and while Trout, the mother, latches onto him. Literally, like a, a leech. And it's just like Ed Gein. The mother did the same thing to Ed Gein. Like, just held him, you know, protected him from everything, from the world. Didn't let him go outside, didn't let him talk to any neighbors. Put him in this bubble and protected, overprotected him and was very domineering type of mother. Now, they lived in a tiny village of Wurstefeld. And that house that you're seeing is a house that he grew up in. That's his childhood home. Very similar, again, to Ed Gein. That was his childhood home. Mm. And then when the mother dies, what once was a immaculately kept home became a, you know, a cesspool, a disaster, a hoarding situation. Nicole, can you please describe the mother here in a photo with her and Armin? Um, she got missing gap tooth. Yeah, she does. She probably matronly old lady. Probably speaks to the whistle. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that was fucked. <laughs> <laughs> She's kind of hot. Ugh. God. Ew. Um, she reminds me of that actress who always plays like very bizarre women um charlie's there or whatever no 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 she's like not you wouldn't know think of her to, uh, and like i don't think we would know the name never mind it's the mother was very domineering and criticized her son constantly now this is very important because jen you asked earlier if armin was schizophrenic and 
this may answer your question. He was a loner as a child because his mother would not let him hang out with any of the neighborhood kids. And at eight years old, he had his first dream, and this dream became reoccurring, Mm -hmm. and his daydreams and his thoughts were constantly about eating his classmates at eight years old. So at that point, he develops an imaginary friend and younger brother, Frankie. Okay, and he's eight? Yeah, he's eight. Armin is eight, and he makes this imaginary, not real friend Mm -hmm. and younger brother, Frankie. Got it. So if you think about it, his stepbrothers left him. All of his fathers left him. His mother's really nagging and domineering and you can't go outside with all these other kids. You're staying in here and rubbing my feet, you know, kind of like me. And then he develops this alternate personality, Mm. which was real to him. You know, it's not just like kids having an imaginary friend. This is a split. It's split right there. Like it's like a hallucination as opposed to imaginary. friend. Yeah. So uh, the way the psychologist was describing it was a split down the consciousness okay. so i would guess schizophrenic like an actual split so ed gein and that like the movie psycho he was split between him his personality and that personality to appease his mother that mm-hmm. was a split i mean it, and it was an actual split of consciousness okay that's how they described it i'm i'm not a psychologist but the way armin is it was split between him and Frankie. So, so Frankie split became personalities. OK, so he, yeah. so he had DID. Yeah. Dissociative identity disorder. Yeah. So like everyone that, you know, has a great future ahead of them and wants to do good things. He joins the army. <laughs> 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 he joins the army. He's. <laughs> That photo is awful. <laughs> I'm showing him a photo of him in the army. It's really bad. Armin joins the army at 18 or 19 years old. I've saw conflicting reports, exact age when he joined. And he was immediately mistreated. He was pushed around. He was bullied. He was made to clean the little trains all the time, stuff like that. He was actually in the supply company. And that's when he started questioning his sexuality. Now, his mother goes bedridden while he was in the military. Now, he's actually stationed very close, so he's still living at home, which is one of the problems. If he would have got away from his mother, then it could have been different, but Mm. he was still living at home. Mm. His mother gets cancer. She becomes bedridden. And much like Ed Gein, he is the primary caretaker of his mother. Now, doing everything... Everything she needs, he's taken care of. Then in 1991, he actually joins a sailing club, like a a yacht, not yacht, but, you know, like a sailboat club Mm -hmm. and with the other group of men. And there's interviews about this. And he actually really enjoys it. And that's his only outlet. He goes two weeks off the German coast, which he lies to his mother. Now, he's 25 at the time. Two weeks off the German coast and he has a great time and he films everything because, you know, he likes to use a camera and everything. And he gets back and he has such a great time. About two years later, they're going again and he wants to go. But his mother now he is 30 years old at this time. His mother will not allow it unless she gets to meet the the actual guy that's organizing this trip, which is weird because he's 30 years old. But the mother decided that her son can go, so he goes. So he got his permission slip signed. Yeah, it's really weird. But you can see how domineering the mother is. If you want to read this, this is from the Daily News, February 8th, 2015. How much his mother's battering contributed to his yearnings is hard to say. But by the time the boy was eight, he was musing about chowing down on his school chums and other youngsters. Through eating them, he hoped they would become his brothers. It was a way to keep them with him forever. Oh, my gosh. Does he not know how digestion works? <laughs> now, this is a psychology that I can't really explain. But when he eats someone, it's not like, oh, man, you probably taste good. And in fact, 
it doesn't taste like chicken. He tells authorities that uh, Brand S tasted like pork. Anyway, he thinks when you eat someone, he thinks when you eat someone, they become a part of you forever. You know, forever, like they're internally inside of you. Was he Catholic? Even though they do come out as doo-doo, just like anything else you eat. Was he Catholic? No, I don't think he was religious at all. Uh, I mean... Well, actually, he is religious. I don't know if he's Catholic, but God did tell him later, once he's in prison, that he did the wrong thing. I'm just asking because... (laughs) You think? (laughs) Yeah. I'm just asking because that is part of... You know Catholicism when you uh, when what, you, eating people the, no the body and no. blood of Christ when, oh yeah you literally eat Jesus every yeah. Sunday <laughs> yeah well when you take part in when you take part in the Eucharist like You're that fucking is... cannibals man <laughs> <laughs> this takes on a whole new meaning <laughs> well yeah I mean I'm just saying like that like that is like wow when you take in the Eucharist and and, and um. Because it's, it's not even meant to be a symbol. It's, not. it's meant to be. It, it's literally. meant to be literal. That's yeah. gross, Jen. Well, now I'm gonna think about this differently. <laughs> All right, so here's a uh, here's a little video of him sailing. See how much fun he's having. Yay! Look how me. I'm having fun. I don't. I've never been on a sailboat. Me neither. Yay! I'm having so much fun. Look at me. I'm not going to eat people. I promise. Did he not eat anyone until Brandes, or yes. had he... Yes, Brandes was the first person and the last person he's well, eaten. Okay. I wouldn't say it's okay. No, I mean, I'm glad that there were not more well, people harmed in the... <laughs> I mean, I... <laughs> well, I, I also... Well, he wanted it. Keep yeah, mind, I guess... Like, he I wanted know he it. wanted but it. But he was also under the influence of... No, no, no. no, no sleep yeah, medication. There, there, are, there are months of communication that I'm about to show you. Okay. About this. Yes. In fact, when Brandes first arrived before he got the sleeping pills he takes his clothes off right when he gets in the dining room and he says look at me like i'm your dinner or something like that i can't remember like i'm your tasty dinner i don't know what (laughs) is that bad that i'm like picturing like a ham bone on a plate (laughs) like like garnished with some you know greenery or something like i'm not saying that it feels like a looney tunes yeah yeah like episode it's like yeah no i'm not picturing it but i just see like armin like looking at him and seeing like a ham bone (laughs) on a plate that brings up a good point and i want to say this after he eats his first meal later that week he cook he cooks brandes's arm bone like the femur, not the femur. Like a chicken wing. The tibia. What is tibia it? The arm tibula. bone. Tibia uh, and What's the arm humorous? bone? Humerus. Humerus. He cooks the human bone, or <laughs> well, he yeah. cooks the human. He cooks the humerus bone in the oven, and this is pretty ingenious. Then he powders it up, and it's like flour, so he can, you know, flour the chicken. He put like flour, like bake, shake and bake. Oh, he in puts the radius? flour on No, no, he makes the bone into flour. Oh. Like he grinds it? Yeah, he grinds it, and now it's like shake and bake flour. Ew. He also puts Brandes's feet on a platter, and this isn't a sexual thing, because no, the no. first time he masturbated after this was when he watched the video, and that was weeks later, and that's the first time he got aroused. So this was more of a, you know, I'm hungry type of shit, not oh, a sexual wow. thing. Well, you know, like... Uh, oh, so he wasn't. So even though Brandis was aroused, he was not aroused during any of this. He was only aroused when he watched it. Yeah. So he was probably more aroused. They by did the have thought coitus though. Like Brandes won a coitus, and so they gave him. You know, they had coitus, and then, but he wasn't. Armin wasn't very good at it. Brandes wasn't satisfied until you know he started sawing the penis. Is yes, penis. Right. I have to ask: Is was Brandis, um, like now? I know you said when when Armin was in the army was when he started discovering that his, his discovering his sexuality. But was he closeted, or was Brandis his first homosexual experience? Or good question. because he said he wasn't very good at it. I don't. I don't know if that was his first. I didn't see that, but he did bring women home. Now this is after the army, so he's twenty five. Almost 30, but this was the year of. He was bringing women home, but he couldn't date any woman unless his mother approved. You know, and that's. So he was only dating which women. Which is also though. like Ed Gein. Yeah, the mother I mean, dies in 1999 in September, and that's when things go south. Very much like Ed Gein, 
the same situation happened. With, he kept with his thinking. mother upstairs? No, but the house gets into disarray, and then he starts... You know, he couldn't cope with it. So what I was trying to say is those fantasies he was having at eight that he suppressed until he was over 30. Now his mother dies and he has no other linkages to this earth. Mm. Now he can go and express those same fantasies that he's been, you know, repressing since he was eight years old. Okay. And that's exactly what happened. Okay. So he actually found, and this is crazy, he found a cannibalism forum, which we're about to see right now. All right. So this is the Wayback Machine. The Cannibal Cafe. What you're looking at right now is the actual forum where he met Brandes on. Now, if you go down here, you see some of these posts. You know, I'm I a redhead be female. I in a man's belly. I, these are people that want to be eaten. Can you can you click on those or no? Yeah, we can click on them. His name, which do you guys remember what his his uh, imaginary little brother's Frankie. name? Frankie. Frankie. So that's what name he used when he was posting on this forum. So it's like you, in Donnie Darko, if you look up Frankie, <laughs> yeah, Frankie, right there. This is what he posted after the murder. He got more confident. And now when he posts again after he's done this before, he got over 200 replies from different people that were interested in being eaten. It's called it, the subculture is called love cannibalism. That's the subculture. And most people because there's a lot of people that went to his house. He would go to the bus station or the train station, pick these people up that supposedly want to be cut up and eaten and slit their penis in half and grill it on the on the stove no one wanted to go through with it at the end and he was a nice guy he didn't just kill you when you got there he would actually draw on your thigh be like this is where i'm going to cut you i'm gonna cut your thigh off here and most people were like oh this is too much for me most people just want to role play they just want the thought of being eaten mm -hmm. like this is a real thing people want to be eaten they want to be like when this guy was eaten, that was like the ultimate orgasm for him is knowing that he was going to be eaten alive. I feel like you could be. Make sense? Yeah, I could. I feel like cannibal and murderer are not necessarily synonymous. Exactly. Which is why he wasn't tried as a murderer at first. He was tried as a cannibal. But, but cannibal. cannibal Cannibalism wasn't against the law in Germany, but he, which but, is fucking crazy, right? But I'm wondering, like, did he, it's did one of those that, things where, like, you don't think you need to act, make that a law until yeah. somebody does, and you're like, okay, we need this law now. <laughs> but I'm just wondering, like, did he intend to murder? Yes, yeah. If you look at these posts on this forum right here, and the posts from Brandes said, "My dream is to be eaten alive." Until I'm dead, you know, I want to be eaten. I want to be consumed my, my whole being. And all these other people said that, too. But then when they came to his house, they didn't want to go through with it. This guy did want to go through with it. That's the thing. He wanted it. Brandon's wanted this. This is what he wanted. It's like suicide by cannibal. You know how they say suicide by cop or whatever? Suicide by cannibal. Hmm. I feel like if anyone wanted to eat me, like you can eat like 50 pounds of fat, like I would be more than happy to give you that, but you know, like muscles and legs and like, no, um, no. Maybe we should step back a second. I think I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's talk a little bit about Brandez's as psychology. It's just right quick. I think I'm stepping ahead of myself and, and maybe you can, uh, maybe we can find out more about this guy. At the time he was 41 years old. He was a software engineer as well. He worked for the Siemens Corporation, you know, the big company. Mm. He worked there for 15 years. At 40 years old, he started working out and you saw the picture of him frog eagled yeah. on the bed. Frog eagled. You know. He started working out because he was scared he was losing his sex appeal. And he was bisexual, men and women. He gets a six pack, he goes bald, but he shaves his head. He starts looking hot. He meets this girl named Alexandria. They dated for a few months, and she really breaks his heart. She leaves. Then he starts really hitting the gay scene, 
And he does have a boyfriend at the time, which was hmm. real worried about him when he left. Because when he left his home to get on that train, he deleted all of his computer files. He basically erased himself. He didn't use his debit card, his credit card. He used only cash to buy a bus ticket. Like he wanted to erase himself. And not be found. Where, and not be like, found. For people to not know where and he And not went. be found. And in fact, the only reason Armin got caught is because he tried to keep doing this. Hmm. But hmm. Brandes had a whole life. You know, he was working at Siemens for 15 years. He was a smart computer guy. And then he just wanted to be eaten. Like he he wanted to be eaten. That's like the sexual sad. I, I can't explain it because I don't really no, want to be eaten. We don't get it. So, yeah. He actually contacted multiple prostitutes at the brothel and paid. He wanted to pay them whatever they wanted. I'm talking about in American dollars, thousands, tens and thousands, 50,000, 100,000. He'll give you a car. He'll do everything, anything you want. If you would just agree, you know, to cut my penis off and stuff like that. And none of the prostitutes Wanted to go that far. So eventually he found the cannibalism forum. So like this guy wanted to be eaten. He wanted mm. this. Like he wanted this. That's why it's like, can you really try this guy for murder? I mean, this guy basically begged. And the whole video is him, you know, wanting this. Right. It, it's weird. We can't understand it because I mean, obviously. But anyway, that's a little bit about his psychology. Anyway, okay, back okay. to the forum. This is Armin posting about trying to get another guy. Hi. What normal build boy between 18 and 30 years of age would like to be slotted by me? Please apply with age, height, weight, and photo. These are the back and forth commentaries. Please mail me more from you, Frankie. I search a young boy between 18 and 25 years old. Have you a normal body? I butchering you and eat your horny flesh, <laughs> Frankie. <laughs> With your horny flesh. <laughs> Cute 21 year old and build 38, 28, 32. 8 inch uncut cock. Sexy roastable arse. Love the thought of being eaten. So get your spit pole ready, Frankie, <laughs> and roast my horny flesh. Carl. See, these are just regular people. <laughs> you think they're regular the, people? They want to be eaten. It's a fucking thing, man. Get woke, Jen. Get woke. Get woke. <laughs> I wonder how many people I've come across in like my personal and professional life that like would post on these things. You never know. Or just like secretly like to be gagged and you have no idea. That's Kinda different. Weird. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, no, 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 no. I'm not saying that's something that I would be into. I mean, I feel like I would be okay being tied up, but like. What? I don't know. I oh don't know God. what I want. I don't know I what I want. I picture like the the red ball in the mouth and like that. Like Me? who's, who's no. in? No, no, no. Just like if you people, put a red ball in my mouth, I look like a fucking into. pig on a luau <laughs> spit. That's what I would look like with a red gag ball in my mouth. Are you between eighteen and twenty five years old? Normally built and healthy. Is it your wish to put an end to your life? But if you still want something sensible out of you, then come to me. This sounds like a really bad advertisement. <laughs> For what? Like, this is something you would see on, like, late night TV. <laughs> I'm, like, doing my best Arnold Schwarzenegger accent. He's Austrian. I will slaughter you and use your body in delicious schnitzel and steaks. Hey, there's the schnitzel. There we go. I wasn't sure there was actually schnitzel in this one. Uh, hello, Frankie. For some time now, I've been looking for some experienced butcher who will slaughter me and then bleed me to death. Are you interested? He puts his email. <laughs> I'm crying. <laughs> this, this might be my new favorite. I know. I think so, too. His, there's his email address. Hi, Frankie. Please kill me quickly and painlessly with a nail gun oh my before God, you stab me. Suck? Bleed me to death and with my schnitzel. And win my schnitzel. And, and win my schnitzel. <laughs> so, when I think nail gun, I think of Happy Gilmore. So yeah. These people wanted their schnitzels schnitzels, dude. They they want their schnitzels cut off. They want to be eaten. I can't explain it. What the fuck? I'm too drunk. 
This is so great. This is, this might be my favorite episode. I just I just don't get it. I'm so glad I made Wiener Schnitzel for dinner. <laughs> I'm so glad I have it for lunch tomorrow. Yeah. God. So so the police caught him because they were invested. How did yeah, they yeah. how did they end up catching this they, guy? They catch this guy because this is kind of crazy. They catch this guy because a student, a local student who was for some reason on these cannibal forums. <laughs> <laughs> just looking around, sees just perusing. Yeah, yeah. Sees Frankie Armin and reports him to the police because after Brandes, Frankie or Armin becomes the authority, and he's got the confidence, and he goes into detail about how to cut someone up. There's actually a PDF file that I downloaded that it's like a how to. <laughs> I am so concerned about what the FBI thinks of your profile. Right. It's like Just how, ask your neighbor. Did you go over for your dinner yet? It's like a how to cannibalize a human corpse. It's fucking awesome. Anyway. Oh my god. That's not the adjective I was expecting, yeah, but that's, I'm worried but, for yeah. my safety. Some some student who was totally not cool and like a snitch narc <laughs> tells the cops and then they go to his house five months later and they execute a search warrant. And in the freezer, there's actually a bottom of the freezer that you couldn't see when he like opened a it. Bottom. A false bottom. Yeah. And there was the meat in there. And he was just open. He was like, yeah, I that's... hate that we're referring to it as meat when it's actually a person. It's yeah. still meat. I mean, yeah, but still like human flesh. They try to try him for cannibalism and then they realize that Germans, they don't see that as, you know, against the law. So they couldn't try him as that. They they tried him as something weird. It was like a crimes, not crimes against humanity. It was something weird, though. I forgot what they tried him as. But he got eight years, and then the prosecution came back because the, they watched the video. And they see that the guy wanted they, it. The guy wanted it. I mean, two hours later, when he's, you know, spurting out of his severed wiener hole, spurting blood in the bathtub, he's still wanting it. So it's like... I mean, how can you try him for murder? They finally got him for murder, the prosecution did, when they watched the very last end of the video and saw that when Frankie, or excuse me, when Armin goes upstairs and sees Brandez collapsing and in and out of consciousness, he takes that knife and sticks it through his neck. That is murder because Brandez at the time was still breathing he was still alive and he was but was he conscious and did not he didn't ask for no, it he, either yeah no he wanted to be murdered yes he did want to be murdered he wanted this he wanted to be eaten completely yeah that was his goal but when he was in and out of consciousness and stumbling around and and in the video from what they say armin you know was very sensual he kissed him on the lips you know, he prayed to God a few times. He's like, what should I do? Even though Brandez was enjoying this, I mean, this is the time of his life, he takes the knife and sticks it through the neck, which is murder in their system. Well, so, I mean, it's murder in, you know, anyone's Even though system. he wanted it, though, but it was consensual. It was consensual murder. That's what it was. So they did get him for murder, so he is still in prison, but I don't think he's going to be there forever because... Yeah, I mean, is it really... What was the sentence? Life in prison, but I don't think it would... Because they don't... I don't know if you guys know this, but the de the death penalty is not a thing in Germany for obvious fucking reasons. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but... Yeah, but they're not allowed to do that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> As a nation, you guys are not allowed to kill anybody. <laughs> <laughs> That's so bad. Yeah. But true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but done. life in prison, but I don't think he's going to be there forever because honestly, the guy wanted, this is what he wanted. It's really weird. Apparently the video- I mean, it's, it's kind of interesting. It's It reminds me in like, some ways about the Conrad Roy case- mm. I mean, this like guy she, was sober. Where she like convinced yeah. him, but like it's kind of like, yeah, hey, are you an accomplice? You're not. Oh, but yeah, he didn't convince him. That um, Brandes convinced Armin to kill him for months. It, you know, there were messages. You know, I want to be eaten. I want to be killed. And then I, you, you need to eat me. So and so. I mean, this was a consensual thing that he really wanted. This was like the ultimate orgasmic experience for him. 
you know. So he is he eligible for parole at I, some point? We don't know. I, no, he is not. As of now, he's not eligible for parole or anything from what I saw. I'm just saying that he's most likely going to get appealed and get out because it's not really murder. I mean, the guy like wanted to be eaten alive and, and stuff. So it's, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not really like he's going and taking someone's life that didn't but want But he I mean, did want to do it again. Like he wants, but he, he did want pattern. to do it again, yes. But it's a pattern, but he's these guys this is what they want though. They want to be eaten alive, man. I can't explain it. This I, is what they want. So it's like I can't either. Give I'm the people saying. what they want, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I do have a few still photos. You guys can go to talkmurder.com. This is from the video. I don't know how they got leaked, but it's not a video, but here are some if you want to describe for the audience, Nicole. Oh, he ain't got no head anymore. Yeah, so he. It did... does look just like the pictures from Ed Gein's book that you're looking at. Yeah, so he he basically what head you're looking cut. at is it... an inverse straight down the center from his used to be penis area to his head, which his head is off. And Armin said that he cut his head off was one of the first thing he he did. He did that in the bathtub. And then he hung was him up. Was that to kind of depersonalize it? I don't know. Maybe but that, to drain the blood. He, no, he he threw the head in the garden, but he didn't eat the head. He only ate the other parts. I'm sorry. Were you trying to grow another body? Like, what are you going to do? <laughs> but when, Out with the turnips. <laughs> but the the goal was to Brandes to eat himself to death and that didn't happen because he kept going in and out of consciousness but this is a really fucked up photo i'm showing you now this photo makes me think that he was preparing some food for brandez if you want to describe this photo that's his uh his, his torso uh, no his uh, uh yeah that's, uh, his, that's his, his nipple his, that's his left peck oh god yeah, it looks his torso. It's like a weird yeah, dolphin fish arm. or something oh yeah he and he looks like he's about to fillet it. Oh my god! Yeah, so you can see that's meat. That is definitely meat. No, well, it's a it's person. A, it's a body. Well, no, I mean, isn't that the weirdest fucking picture you ever seen? It's I mean, strange. like I probably will not be able to sleep tonight. Thank you. It also looks like he's wearing an outfit, like that yeah, they, like a surgeon outfit. No, not a surgeon outfit. He looks like he's wearing one of the outfits from Monty Python, the one of, like the knights wore. <laughs> <laughs> the coconuts. <laughs> Well, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah he does. I do. I do. Uh, that's a photo that you can't unsee. Nope. It's oh, bad. All right. Well, that is the uh, that's that's the Germans for you. <laughs> Danke schön for that story. Yeah. Um, so that's uh, go talk more dot com if you want to see that. Um, <laughs> If you have some kind of bloodlust to see that for some reason. Yeah, and uh, fun fact, the term antrophagus, antrophagus in German means cannibal. So anyway, that's the story on the Rutenberg cannibal. Mm. Hope you enjoyed it. I did, actually. That yeah, was yeah. Um, As weird as that sounds, I did very much enjoy that yeah, story. Yeah, so I don't know why that was shown to me by Google, but... You know, the similarities to Ed Gein are uncanny, though, because the mother situation, the schizophrenia, the hanging know, of the body, the hanging that of the body like is exactly, exactly the, same. the same. Yeah. So if you want to hear the Ed Gein podcast, be sure to type in ghoul by TalkoCast and listen to the first episode and subscribe. And that's all I have for tonight. So thank you guys so much. My name is John. I'm here with Jen and Nicole. And until next time, good night, you lovely, lovely people.